I thought a good thing to stream today might be some 3D printer maintenance that I needed to do anyway. This is my little printer. So I've got two printers. There's there's the big Type A machines in the closet that's printing the shell right now. And this is my Orion Delta from CME CNC. It has this heated bed and it's just a really reliable little machine. This is actually the first kind of major maintenance that it's needed. So I basically got to rebuild the heating resistors in the hot end. Pretty much everything is in this base. So it's got three motors for each of these towers, another motor for the extruder over here. Then on the hot end, it has a heater, two fans, thermistor. It's a really nice minimal design, but it's also good at being rigid and reliable. Prints off of an SD card. The problem is the hot end is not getting hot. Max is out at like 170 Celsius or so, which is not what you expect from a hot end. The resistance of the heating elements in there is like six ohms, or as it should be more like four ohms, I think or no, more like three ohms. They actually have a pretty good guide on doing this replacement. The hot end has two heating resistors, so they sell their replacement parts. You also need some of this uh, thermally conductive silicone. So, where's that 2.1 or 21? That's gotta be, so, the reason, the reason you end up having to replace these heating resistors is that they're typically run way over their rated power. Um, on the assumption that you're attaching them to a huge heat sink, but still, they're running a lot hotter than they're really meant to, so they don't tend to last that long. First step is actually to turn this whole thing upside down by inverting the towers, as they say. Just one at a time, pulling these to the bottom. Remove this zip tie temporarily. That's the tube that the filament actually gets pushed through. All right, and then there's a spacer, which is another a laser cut piece of wood. Oh yeah, that just pulls off. A couple of strands of wire are broken right there too, but I did actually measure the resistance at the crimps, so that's certainly not the only problem. Oh wait, wait, what, how did that even just happen? Oh, yeah, cool. It's kind of sticking on this piece. Oh, yeah. Has this, uh, this resistor seen better days? Yeah, these resistors are not happy about the situation they've been put in. Yeah, okay, that one's open circuit. That one is over its rating. Apparently this also bonds pretty well to metal. It's not scraping off super easily. So the resistors are easy. I just need to make sure this is positioned so the thermistor can hang out in there stress-free while the silicone cures. <laughs> now I'm just making a mess. It's okay. There's a much larger mess to come. I'll make sure that has a decent amount of liquid around the outside too, just to keep the thing structural. Okay. Just trying to make sure that whole area is wet with silicone. Like I don't, I don't just have dry spots in there. That's seeming better. I'm just gonna make sure this resistor is actually kind of centered in there. All right. I think for this, I just get to leave it alone for a while. Last time, we took apart the hot end, stripped it down to where the resistors enter on the sides. This is one of the sort of older style 3D printer heaters that are actually just based on using power resistors at way beyond their rating. And so they fail every once in a while and you have to replace them, which is great. These want to be bent down, 
trying to be gentle to the resistors themselves. go. So the heater has its own negative return, but there's a single positive shared between the fans and the heater. So this is going to be going right back to the power supply's 12 volt rail, and then they'll be switching all of them to ground on the other side to turn the individual fans and the heater on and off. I don't really want to disturb this existing splice, but this is really short, so I might splice a small additional bit of wire into this, as ugly as that sounds. How is the insulation stuck onto the wire like that? As this may be from being so close to the heater, maybe the insulation is just kind of thermally set onto the wire somehow. All right, let's just do that. Let's just put some nice 20 gauge silicone wire on both of these, and then hopefully that'll last longer. That's a little better. Okay. So now I can actually trim this to a good length, I hope, and put them in the crimps. In the instructional video for this step, they showed just crimping this using a pair of side cutters to kind of periodically squeeze along the length of the crimp. It's already feeling like it's holding on pretty solidly. Maybe a little zigzag bend is better than shortening it further. I can't tell if this is really making a good joint onto both of these resistors, but I guess the ohm meter is not going to lie. Got three ohms between the cramps, which is what we expect. I think at this point it's mostly just assemble it and see if it works. Two cute little fans. This blower fan is for the layer cooling over here. It actually blows onto the model you're printing, whereas this is the fan that actually cools the part of the hot end that's not supposed to be hot. Oh, maybe the zip tie is the next thing to put on to start relieving the stress in these wires. You can actually get the backlight on the LCD to turn on when you're moving the towers by hand. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna tell it to preheat and then we can keep an eye on the temperatures. Hopefully we'll just see it uh, climb up nice and stable. All right, there's the fan. You can verify that the fan is spinning. You can tell the fan is a little buzzy, but it is working. This front plate is a little bit destroyed on this printer. It still works, but like that piece of plastic is loose and it's going to break at some point. So I really, need, I really should print a replacement. It is starting to smell like things that are getting hot for the first time. Nose temp is rising. Ooh yeah, we're getting a little ooze. 175. And now it's holding at 180. Oh yeah, let's print some of these. Winchbot nut wheel. I think I actually need some. All right, so the nozzle's already hot. It's starting to heat up the bed. You can see that LED, maybe. Oh, I just saw a little wisp of smoke coming from the hot end, but it was momentary. And it's almost at 220. Yeah, it's putting off some kind of gross fumes right now, but it seems to be working. In this system, all the motors are in the base. Each of these towers has a motor right below it that pulls a belt up and down, and then the extruder is the Bowden drive over here, but that makes the actual hot end really light. I mean, a heater, two fans, a thermistor, the entire thing.
I might try sitting down and see if the printer still smells terrible. Yeah, it does. It's, it's getting less, but I might not want to run it in the closet right away because I don't really want to fill the closet with terrible fumes. Maybe I'll print another one of these outside and then put it back in. printer is still putting off fumes. The kilowatt is still saying the printer is around 100 watts, a little bit under. resist the temptation to just yank it off immediately because it'll it needs to cool down it's still gonna be soft we made it through a 3d print and so did the printer let's take a look at the hot end it seems like it's still fine so there are the crimps we just did there's all the high temperature silicone still siliconing it up all right well I hope everyone had a good time or left I hope you didn't stay while having a terrible time. That would be the worst of every world, right? There we go.